Hi, it's Martin and Arlo. We're here in the studio for the second video in this series where we're going to write a brand new bread formula. Yeah. In part one, we looked at Baker's percentages, and in part two, we're gonna sketch out the formula. Okay, so let's start talking about this bread. We've been discussing this a little bit, and one of the early things that we decided on was, what will the texture be? And that may seem like a funny place to begin, but really, um, texture has a lot of drivers in the dough environment that we want to consider early on. So, will the recipe have butter and eggs in it, or will it be treated more like what we'd call a lean dough, which would be like a baguette, or a ciabatta, or a sourdough, or something like that? And so far, you're saying what? I want a crusty bread. Crusty bread, okay. So, we're gonna make a crusty bread. And one of the next considerations is around flour types. So what type of flour are we going to use? So tell me a little bit about that. What were you thinking? I was thinking a little bit of buckwheat, um, maybe some whole grains. Okay. Like all-purpose flour too. Okay. All right. So he's saying a blend of grains, a little bit of buckwheat, which is a nice niche grain, which has tons of flavor and ferments really well. Maybe a little bit of whole wheat flour, that's what you're saying? Yep. Uh, and then some all-purpose too, just for the sort of backbone of it, right? Um, will that be the bread? Whole wheat, buckwheat, white flour, or do you want something else in there? I was thinking of putting cranberries and walnuts in there. Cranberries and walnuts, okay. So this is sounding like a bread with some amendments in it, a crusty bread, um, tart cranberries, Nutty walnuts, okay, all right. So let's do this. I'm going to write the bread out okay. and then we'll come back and talk about um, some of the decisions that we made around hydration and how we'll treat the components like pre-ferment and some of those details. And then we'll talk about it, okay. So I've taken some time and I've sketched out uh, a proposed, basically a starting point for this recipe. We haven't made this bread before. We don't exactly know how it's gonna go, but we have some percentages on here that we're hoping will work just based on experience. If you've never written a formula before and you want to identify um, where you should begin with certain percentages, my best advice is to look at a resource that you trust. So um, look for books which contain Baker's percentages with formulas. I think that's a great place to start. If you have a formula that you've been making for a while, what you can do is go in and actually you know, add up all the flour weights and then see what the water is as a percentage of that and you can based on the measurements that you have, figure out what the baker's percentages are, and then you can use that as a jumping off point. Um, I've done this enough that I can make an educated guess about how much flour or how much water or what might be good. I can make some of those um, guesses, but let me guide you through some of the decisions that we made. Okay, so Arlo wanted some whole wheat and also some buckwheat. Uh, I just put a little bit of buckwheat. A little bit of buckwheat goes a pretty long way um, and then I put some whole wheat in there too at 20%, so we're going to have about 25% total of whole grain. And then we've got 75% white. And so if we went up to say 50% whole grain and 50% white, we'd have a tighter structure. The white flour that's in there is going to enable us to have a little bit more open structure, a little bit lighter eating experience. It's not going to be like a light fluffy bread by any stretch, but It'll help it be a little bit more open. Uh, and then let's just go down the line, I guess. 80% water, so four-fifths water to flour. 
Um, with all of this whole grain, I think that's gonna be fine. It's not gonna be a dense dough. That'll allow it to feel a little bit more supple um, and it'll help the eating quality. It'll also help the keeping quality because the loaf will have a fair amount of moisture. Okay, 2% salt. 2% uh, salt is pretty standard. If you look at baguettes or sourdough or even brioche and other things, 2% is a pretty standard percentage right around there. Um, I added a little bit of yeast. You could do this without any commercial yeast. You'd have to adjust your bulk fermentation a little bit, but I added just a little bit. It's only four grams, and my preference is instant dry yeast. Uh, cranberries and walnuts, I mean, these are pretty much to taste. 30% total of those will make a bread where you should have some cranberry and some walnut in pretty much every bite. It's not gonna be densely packed, but I think that's a good starting point for us. And when we make the bread and then actually taste it, we'll decide, is it enough or should we go up or should we have you know, 20% walnuts and only 10% cranberries? I mean, these are choices that you can make. Uh, also listed on here is a little bit of sourdough. So the sourdough we will use over here because we're gonna use a stiff levain. We're gonna use a pre-ferment for this. And so reminder, this is the total formula. This is the sum of all parts. This is everything that will go into this batch, okay? So a little bit of sourdough. This is the percentage column. And down here we have a total dough percentage of 214.9%. And we were talking about loaf size and sort of going back and forth. And we decided on 600 grams, which is 22 ounces, right around 22 ounces. It'll be a decent sized loaf. Um, because it has some amendments in it, the cranberries and the walnuts, it will be a little bit heavier loaf. So it's not gonna be a huge loaf, uh, but 600 gram loaves. And so we decided to do a four batch, uh, four loaf batch. So four loaves at 600 grams a piece. That means that the total amount of dough that we'll have in the bowl will be 2,400 grams. So this looks a little complicated. Does it look complicated or what do you think? I guess so, just a titch. Just a little bit com complicated, yeah. Yeah. So remember that in order to find the flour amount, what we need to do is divide the total dough amount, the batch, by total dough percentage. So 2,400 divided by 214.9%, 100, or 1,117 grams. 1,117 grams. Okay, so 1,117 grams, and then to figure out how much of each of these flours you have, you take 1,117 times 0.75, or you take 75%, and you get that, you take 20% and you get that, you take 5% and you get that. Those three should add up to 1,117 grams. There is sometimes some rounding in there, so the best way to do it is to do it in a spreadsheet program where you have actually multiple decimal points, but we just did it on the calculator and everything's coming out pretty close. So then we just go down the line, multiplying our total flour amount by these percentages. We get these numbers, and if we add them up, then we end up at 2,400 grams, our total batch weight, 2,400 grams. Okay, does that make sense so far? Yeah. Sort of? Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Now, the two true working parts of the formula are over here on the right-hand side. We have day one, where we're gonna set this stiff levain, and then on day two, we do our mix, right? Day two, we do our mix we decided to pre-ferment all of our whole grain flour. We decided to pre-ferment all of our whole grain flour. And so that's what we over, have over here. We're gonna make a stiff levain. Uh, stiff levain is a sourdough starter which has a dough hydration consistency, it's firm. And we're gonna hydrate that. Uh, we're making it quite stiff. I've only hydrated it at 70%, which is pretty stiff. But that stiff environment will really create a lot of flavor. So we have our whole wheat and we have our buckwheat and then we have 70% and we have a little bit of sourdough culture which will be the inoculate. It will be the culture that will provide the building blocks for this to rise. Okay, so day one, we're gonna mix that and let it sit for 12 to 18 hours at room temperature. 
And then on day two, we're gonna come back and we'll combine our uh, leaven and our flour, water, salt, and yeast. And we'll need to combine and then we'll eventually fold in our cranberries and walnuts. And once we add all of those things together, we should have 2,400. Um, one note, so how do I get these numbers? Okay, so the all-purpose, because there's no all-purpose up here, the all-purpose number is just coming straight down. It's, the, it's that. Water is this number minus this number, and then you get this number. Salt, there's no salt in the stiff levan, so the salt, salt just comes straight over. The yeast comes straight over, and cranberries and walnuts also just come straight over. In the levan, 502 is this number right here. And if we add everything up, and we get 2,400 grams. Does that make sense? Yeah. Complicated? Yeah, not, really. not, not too bad? No. Um, you see how these two things add up to all of these numbers, right? Yes. These two pieces add up to this piece. Yes. So this piece is really, it's kind of like the blueprint. Uh -huh. It's like the syntax. This is the architecture of what we're gonna make. Uh -huh. And then if you bust it into these two component pieces, you have the pre-ferment, and then you have the mix on day two. Uh -huh. You know what I'm excited for? I'm excited to make this bread. I'm tired of talking about it. Yes. Yeah, so, so pretty soon we're gonna make it. Yeah. Okay, so. This is part two in the video. Join us real soon and we'll be back here making this bread and taking notes and making adjustments and working on Arlo's cranberry walnut bread. Awesome. So thank you and we'll see you soon.